Watson is a fascinating guy. He is building uh, this like brain uh, product that is going to analyze our brains, like this helmet thing. But before we get to Colonel and what he's building there, tell us who is this dude? Okay, so Brian Johnson doesn't have your traditional Silicon Valley founder story. He actually grew up relatively poor in uh, Springville, Utah. Uh, he was the middle of five children. And um, his mom stayed at home uh, with the kids. His dad was a trash collector turned lawyer, but then he had like a drug problem and an affair. So he got divorced uh, from their mom. So Johnson kind of grew up with little direction, didn't know what he wanted to do with his life until he went on this two-year church mission trip to Ecuador. And he says, when I came back, the only thing I cared about was how to do the most good for the most people. Since I didn't have any skills, I decided to become an entrepreneur. So he came back, was in college, and he started a business selling cell phones and service plans. And um, he later, later invested in a real estate development company that wasn't very successful, left him 25K in debt. And to pay it off, he was forced to take a job selling credit and processing services to small businesses door to door. And then in 2007, he hit it big when he had an idea. So he got this idea basically from his prior experiences, but he got an idea for a software company focused on making online payments much more seamless at the time. This is again, 2007. It was called Braintree, which he later sold for $800 million in cash to eBay. It's pretty incredible when entrepreneurs like this sell a big business like Braintree, which still today is a, a pretty successful business. Do we have any sense as to what drives him in terms of taking all the money and then just go putting it into, not all of it, but a lot of the money and putting it into an effort like this that seems so crazy uh, with Colonel? Yeah, so he actually uh, took $54 million of his own cash to start Colonel and raised another 54 million or something like that. He, a total of 110 million, uh, this company has backed. But Colonel is a neuroscience company that builds non-invasive brain recording technology. So it's a helmet um, and it relies on your brain impulses and, and kind of that kind of thing instead of something like Neuralink, which is Elon Musk's brain interface company that is actually an implant inside of your brain. And this helmet that you put on, what is the purpose of it? Is it supposed to uh, be more like diagnostic or is he trying to like program my brain? He's going to start telling me to do things and all of a sudden my arms will start flailing because he told me to do it. No, the whole point. Uh, so so uh, this is really important and interesting because he is currently selling these helmets for $50,000. He's sending them to customers. Many of his customers are research institutions. They're not people like you and me. But the whole idea is that the helmet analyzes the brain's neurons, electrical impulses, and blood flow at the speed of thought. That's really, really fast. And that's why it's so you know radical and innovative. Um, and the whole idea of this helmet is to help researchers understand how the human brain reacts to the world's external stimuli. So when something happens to you externally, they're able to map it in your brain. And it says that um, it will allow researchers to use the data to better study brain aging, mental disorders, strokes, and even analyze the experience of psychedelic trips. You're telling me that research institutions are buying this? Yep. So the best business show research team, we could buy one for 50 grand and we could do research here with the helmet. I'm not putting I mean, one of those on. You You're not going to put one on? No. Why not? I don't want someone tracking my brain when it's on my head and stuff. John? I'll put one on. <laughs> <laughs> Polina, would you put one on? I think I would. And what, what would the goal be in terms of like, what are we going to get out of it? Is he going to tell us that we're dumb or is he going to like try to optimize something in our brain to make us smarter? But I don't, I don't think it's at the step of like optimization yet. I think the sole purpose is like, okay, let's see like how the electrical impulses react when you interact as a human with external stimuli and it'll just give them a better idea for the future of how to optimize it. Cause right now we know that, you know, psychedelics maybe work, um, for PTSD and low doses and things like that, but we don't necessarily know why and what regions of the brain it activates. I also feel like you got to be an absolute baller 
to be rich as hell and want to go do this. I mean, it's not cheap. It's fifty thousand dollars, right? No, 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 no. To build the you company. Right oh, now. to build the company. He spent fifty million dollars yeah. of his own money to go do this, yeah. and it's like, dude, you're rich. Like, you do whatever you want, and to choose to go do this, there's something wrong with you. Like, like you got you got something going on in your brain where you're like, oh, I got to go do this. Yeah, that's not normal. Wait. So, Most people, if they had eight hundred million dollars, they're chilling on a beach in Cancun, saying, uh, "Can I get another margarita, please?" It's wired differently. <laughs> John's like, "Yeah, that's what I've been doing." <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what, besides the point. Well, Polina, small um, just note on Brian Johnson. So you would think that after you sell a company for eight hundred million dollars, you'd be chilling on a beach, you'd be super happy, but he actually reacted to to it quite the opposite. Um, he. Uh, he was stressed out. He was overweight. His marriage was falling apart and he was having suicidal thoughts right after he sold the company. So it's like you reach the upper echelon of like entrepreneurial success and then you're miserable. So what he decided to do is overhaul his like entire life. So he moved to LA to start over and he started running these cognitive and physical ex uh, experiments to improve his sleep, identified his blind spots and reboot his health and get in like great shape. Um, he, he does, he, it's kind of like biohacking in a way, but he, he has like really crazy, um, routines in terms of how he structures his day. I saw a picture of this guy and he's ripped out of his mind to the point where you're like, that's not normal. Like you ever see the people who, uh, they have like, like, uh, muscles. You're like, I didn't know that muscles existed there. Yeah. He's like one of those types of guys. And the photo on the article is him. Was he doing like yoga or something? Uh, he had the helmet on, he was doing something it, like yoga or something. And, uh, when you see it, you're just like the, uh, obsession that it takes from a health, a wellness, a diet exercise, etc., to get to that level of fitness is incredible. And so if you're that obsessed with your body, of course you're gonna be that obsessed with your brain as well. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. the systems work together. And so it just feels like it's like a completely different way of viewing uh, our brains and, and the information that we get from it.